All right, guys, I just received my analog pocket here that I've been waiting for for a year. I pre-ordered this analog pocket and this accessory right here literally a year ago, and it finally just arrived literally a few days ago, and I've been uh, putting it through its paces, playing some of my games. I own a ton of Game Boy and Game Boy Color games and all that kind of stuff that this thing is compatible with, which we're going to be talking about and uh, going over the accessory and if this thing is worth it and who it's for and all that kind of stuff in the video. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming techie. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's go ahead and start off with the unboxing here. I do have some games here on the side, of course, that we're going to be taking a look at, but let's go ahead and start with the analog pocket itself. So this is the nice black box that it comes with. It says analog pocket here, and then it says analog pocket console USB-C here on the, on the back. Uh, I did get the black edition here, so let's just go ahead and lift up the box here. And there is the analog pocket. Of course, I have already been playing with this, so I have already unboxed it. I'm just un, un I'm just re-unboxing it for you guys so you guys can see what comes in here and stuff. So let's put this here for the side. It comes with the little stickers in here, and it does come with a USB-C to USB-C cable right here. That's all that's in the box, just those two things. So we're going to go ahead and put that to the side. And then we got the analog pocket sitting right there. And then, of course, we had that accessory I was talking about before. The only thing that comes in here when you open up this box is the game gear adapter which we'll talk about here towards the video that is the game gear adapter we'll leave that there on the side for the time being that's the only thing that came in the box uh is that so put that to the side here and here is the analog pocket guys uh obviously it very much looks like a game boy uh you have the directional pads here you have the four buttons here you have some buttons here on the bottom the select start and the analog home button uh, there at the bottom and then here on the side, you have your volume up and down. You have the power button there in green. Uh, you have a regular Game Boy Link cable, which is really cool because this can actually, they either sell Game Boy Link cables, like brand new ones that you could buy, or it also has, it also works with the original Game Boy Link cables. And you can even link this Game Boy, this analog pocket to an original Game Boy, Game Boy Color and stuff and still play Link games with these. So that's fantastic. Has an SD card slot here on the side, which you're definitely going to need to upgrade the OS as soon as you get it, which I did. That's why I have an SD card in there is because I upgraded the OS to the latest one. Here on the back, as you can see what that looks like there. And you got some buttons here on the top here as well, the triggers here. And that's pretty much it. Then you've got the stereo speakers on the sides there. And that's pretty much it. It has a really sleek design, obviously. I chose the black version. There is a white version as well. It has a nice matte finish to it. Uh, let's go ahead and power this thing on. So it powers up really fast, of course. This is the main interface of there. And before we get into the main interface here, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of things here. Uh, that the analog pocket uh, offers here. So, of course, it does play Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color games. Uh, we talked about the fact that I have the adapter here to play Sega Game Gear games, so that's obviously an option as well. And then they did announce coming in 2023 that there is going to be new adapters for this as well, which I'm definitely going to be getting that plays Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color games and Atari Lynx cables and Turbo Graphics 16 and PC Engine games, so that's going to be fantastic. We're going to get new adapters for that to play all of those games on the system as well, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it also has, uh, obviously, as you can tell here, a 3.5-inch screen. has a 615 PPI, so really, really high resolution. Actually, 10 times the resolution of the original Game Boy, which is crazy. It's an LCD screen with 1600 by 1440 resolution. The color accuracy on this thing and the contrast are really, really good. And the it does also have Gorilla Glass as well. The battery life on this thing is six to 10 hours, depending on obviously how you're playing. And it has, a, uh, you can obviously put it to sleep as well, which I'll show you during a game. And it also has something that I forgot to mention, a 3.5 millimeter jack. So you can go ahead and connect some headphones to this as well that I forgot about there. So that's it as far as that goes. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the OS features here. Let's go ahead and first put a game into here. Let's go ahead and just start off with the uh, Game Boy game. So we'll start off with playing the uh, original Pokemon Yellow game, or one of my favorite games from when I was a kid. So let's go ahead and take this out. Got the original Game Boy there. So uh, you just go ahead and slide it on the back. Slides right there, perfectly even with the Game Boy there. And then it stays on the main screen, of course. 
And uh, on here, I'm going to show you a few things before we actually get into the game. Of course, you can hit play cartridge right there on the top. Uh, there is also a library icon, which we'll talk about here in a minute on why that's grayed out. We have open FPGA. Uh, basically, that's your core. So they finally released uh, this thing was kind of underdeveloped until literally like the a couple of months ago. Finally, so people who got this like a year ago were pretty disappointed because a lot of the features were missing. However, I'm lucky enough where this is actually not missing those features anymore uh, because a lot of them have come out. They're not all here yet, which is what we're going to talk about. But a lot of the core stuff is already at least in here. So the open FPGA is basically the core for the system so now people can actually make cores and we're not going to dive into that in this video but you can actually get super nintendo emulators and nintendo emulators and sega genesis and all that stuff people are making cores that are ported over to the system so now you can just you know put the rom files on an sd card and, and use the cores on here it's not exactly why i bought this system so it's that probably is something i'm going to be doing if i want to do that i'll probably use my steam deck or something that has a larger screen for me i want to be able to just use this with actual real cartridges and stuff because i obviously own a bunch of them so I'll be sticking to that, uh, not the ROM files itself. But just know, if you do get it, that's what that is. And you definitely could get a bunch of emulators already. It just started a couple of months ago here in August. So there's development going on every single day as far as people porting their emulators and updating it to work great. But I have heard really good things about the Super Nintendo emulator, Sega Genesis, and the NES emulator working really well already. Memories is something on here that is basically save states uh, is what this is called and they finally added it this here recently If I click on it here, you can see you have two options you have save states and screenshots So save states is basically all your games that you save as you can see here uh, My save states are there and you can see there's a little, I know it's hard to see in the video there But there's a little screenshot that they finally just added a couple of weeks ago So now when you take when you do a save state you'll have a screenshot of exactly where you left off So you can see that there if I if I zoom in a little closer there with the focus and it also tells you Pokemon Yellow version, Pikachu, the date, and all that kind of stuff on there, which is really cool. So you have up to 128 slots that you can have across all your games here in save states, which is really cool. And then screenshots is just the ability to be able to obviously take screenshots. And then screenshots is just the ability to be able to take screenshots for different games, uh, as you can see here. Uh, that I took and it will tell you information of when you took it and all that kind of stuff if you want to take screenshots of different parts of games. So essentially that's what memories is there. So that's great. And then we have tools uh, where there's developer tools and uh, some music tools that you can have on here, which are interesting. And then we have settings on here. We can go to about and look at all the different features of the analog OS that they recently added. If you want to take a look at that uh, support and the special thanks and all that kind of stuff are in here. Uh, you can change some options there for the memories, change some options on how the analog starts up. If you want to go to the menu or right to the cartridge, if there's a cartridge in there, set the date and time, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then uh, there's some other settings that we're going to dive into throughout the game. Now, the reason that library is grayed out because library is also still in beta. They just released this here a few months ago, like I talked about in August. And library is essentially what this looks like here. So you can see when I hit play to start a cartridge, the first thing that pops up is what's actually in there. So you can see that this one's saying it's Pokemon Yellow, Special Pikachu Edition, and it says the system, the developer, the publisher, and uh, the region and then all that kind of stuff. And you can even add your own image if you put it on the SD card to show. So this is the game detail screen. What library is essentially going to do is it's gonna be a library of every game across all the systems that are supported on here where you can just search and look up different games, see all the details about them, share them and all that kind of stuff. That's what they're touting the library feature to be. That's why it's still grayed out. That's uh, what is coming that you're gonna be able to just search for any game, look up all the details about it and all the information and all that kind of stuff. So it's like a like an almanac almost of every single game out there and information about it. But right now all you get is you have to actually insert a cartridge and then it gives you the play details screen and then you get a little bit of information about it so uh, the library feature is still something that's in beta and coming this is all we've gotten so far is that now you actually see parts of uh, information about the game when you actually start it up and then of course if you just start it up you go ahead and open this up you can see that the pokemon yellow game is starting up here all the familiar sounds that we're all used to Go ahead and lower the volume a little bit. So you can see the volume is definitely definitely loud enough. You can lower it right there from the side, which is really good. And you can see that this is what this looks like right now. If I hit the analog uh, option here, and I go into settings and pocket, I have obviously other options that I can change. I'm going to go into display. You can change the brightness there. You can go into audio. You can change that. And then if I go into systems and then I select the system, the system that's being played right now is already highlighted, so it's Game Boy Color. 
So if I go into that, I have even more options. I can change the audio level. I can change some of the controls because you can custom all those, all these controls. Uh, and then you can also go into video. And video actually brings up the game behind the scenes and you can actually see. Lower this a little bit more. You can actually see the display mode and then you can select it. So you have the analog Game Boy Color, which is a little bit more vibrant. And then you have the original Game Boy Color, which is what it's on now. So if I click on this, you can see it cleans up the image and now it's all kind of kind of white back there. And then if I hit the original, it goes back to that grayscale that we're all used to uh, when you're playing the Game Boy Color. So you can see how that changes there. This is the new analog version filter and this is the original. So you'll see how much clearer that blue is. Uh, it's really really cool that you can go ahead and play with this uh, for now I'm gonna leave it on the original Game Boy You can mess with the frame blending there the sharpness You can even mess with the position if you want though This one doesn't have any reason because this is the exact aspect ratio that you would want So this looks exactly how it's supposed to uh, on the screen You can see the screen is really really good looking and I'm really happy with it Then of course when you're done with the game if you want to slay, save a slave a save slot like I did, you would just hit the analog button in the left direction, and then it saves the game right wherever you are by doing analog in the middle and then the left direction, and then it takes a, a, a shot there as far as saving it. So we're going to go ahead and quit this game here. We're going to go ahead and hit confirm and just quit out of that. Let's go ahead and try a different game here. So that was Game Boy Color. So let's go ahead and move over to the Game Boy Advance. Now something that's really interesting here, these do work. I'm not going to go ahead and play it for copyright strikes and all that kind of stuff. But these Nickelodeon videos that we all used to remember from the Game Boy Advance, they do work and they look really good on here, which is pretty funny. Uh, I actually will just show you a, a couple of seconds of it just so you guys can see. You just slide the, the, the Game Boy Advance slot in there. You just go ahead and hit play cartridge. Again, you get the, the detail screen just like before, telling you what it is, made by Nickelodeon and all that kind of stuff. And then you hit play, and there it is right there. And you can see how that looks. And if I hit play, I can select any of these. It tells you to fast forward and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit until they actually start. So yeah, there you guys can see how that looks there. So yeah, that works. Uh, just so you guys know, you can definitely look at, uh, play with these cartridges on here. Uh, so that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and move to some Game Boy Advance here. So I got NHL Hits uh, as a person who loves hockey, of course. And of course, you get the same screen here for game details. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Starting up the game here. It starts up really fast. There's no load times with any of this stuff, obviously. And then if I just hit all this just to show you guys how the game looks we'll just leave that as is as you can see computer just scored on me that's not a surprise but it does look really really good on here on this small screen and this is obviously Game Boy Advance and it looks really good and you could do the exact same thing on here you can go ahead and, and kind of do this uh, let's just let it play. I don't care if I lose. Uh, and then you go into settings and pocket again. And then you go into systems. And then obviously GBA is now selected. You can go ahead and click on video. Uh, same stuff I talked about before. But now you have the analog video. You have the original GBA. Look at the way that that changes there. Uh, with the way that that looks. So you got this vibrant color. And then you have original GBA. And then original SP. So you have uh, both different filters on there. That you can play with. So this one has a little bit more of a tint and this one's a little bit brighter and then this one's even more bright the analog gba to kind of bring that all into focus and what's really cool if you want to i'm sure a lot of you guys probably aren't going to want to do this but this one gba as you can tell doesn't take up the whole screen because this isn't the aspect ratio so there's black bars on the top most people are probably not going to do this but you could technically change the height here to be the full resolution of 1600 by 1440 and then change the position of the y so it's fully at zero so it's taking up the whole entire screen and now when you go back, as you can see, and I resume the game, now it's all just stretched out. So I'm assuming a lot of people are not going to want to do this because obviously they want the way it should be played because you may, you're obviously stretching the image out. Um, but the option is there. And also, I love the NHL Hits game, just so you guys know. It's not the best version of it. Of course, the Xbox version and stuff were, were better. But the game is a lot of fun. But yeah. So this game works really well as well. We're going to go ahead and quit out of this one here. So really, really like this one. 
and, and NHL hits works great on there. So let's, the last thing we're going to take a look at here is of course the Sega gen, uh, sorry, the, um, Sega game gear adapter. So you just take the adapter that they give you and you kind of just slot it on the back here, just like that. And then you take your game gear game and you just slot it right there. Of course, it's going to make the game stick out on the top, but that's fine. And then we just go ahead and hit play cartridge just like before immediately starts working you can see there was no lag or anything like that it says sonic chaos the exact same thing which is the game i have in here again you're going to have a little bit of black bars on here they're going to be a little smaller than what the black bars were on the game boy advance when that's left to default but you can see it starts up you can see how nice that looks and again you have the exact same capability of going into the system and then changing the video display mode so you have the original you can play the original game boy uh game gear there so you see how that looks Game Gear Plus, Game Gear, and then the look at how much different the analog it makes and how much more vibrant it looks compared to the uh, original. I mean, obviously, it's great to have both, so you can go ahead and kind of feel nostalgic depending on which way you want to play it. But the colors definitely pop on this screen as you guys are looking at when you leave it on like this uh, analog pocket uh, way that they do things. So here's Sonic Chaos here. Let's go ahead and play here for a second so you guys can see. And here we are playing Game Gear on here. Go ahead and zoom right there and go over there. Oh, I messed that up. I haven't played this game in years and I'm still trying to figure out what the controls are on here. But yeah, you can see it works really well. It has a really good look to it. And uh, it's obviously looks really, really good on here. So I can't wait to see when the other adapters come in on on that stuff, on, on how that's going to look and, and what they're going to bring with the, with the other adapters that are coming here in 2023. Hopefully I can get my hands on that for you guys so we can test even more games. But I'm really, really happy with this thing. Uh, obviously, we're still missing that library feature, but that's not the end of the world. I bought this. I bought this to be able to save save states, which is great. So you don't have to worry about like Pokemon games, like like obviously like this one and Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Silver that we have here that I don't have to worry about having an internal battery to save some of these. Now I can just rely on playing them on here and I still feel like I'm playing on original hardware uh, if I don't want to worry about the battery inside and then save states and then be able to play them and never have to worry about losing them, which is fantastic. Uh, good amount of playtime, six to 10 hours, like I talked about, USB-C charging, uh, all that stuff. The fact that it has link capability with either other pockets or a pocket to another original Game Boy Advance and stuff is awesome. And uh, the fact that people are obviously taking emulation on this thing, if people are into that, that's awesome as well for the people who want to do it. Like I said, for me, that's not why I bought this thing. I have other ways of playing emulation that I think are better on um, bigger screens and stuff, but it's fantastic. And the thing that sells this is the screen for sure. I mean, like I said, the resolution is com is really, really high. And, uh, you know, at, at 615 PPI, that's an insane amount of pixels per inch. Uh, on here and it looks fantastic i don't know if it came across in the video but it looks really really good really sharp 10 times the original resolution of the original game boy so it breathes life into the original game boy and game boy color games and all that stuff playing pokemon yellow again especially with the analog pocket display mode there kind of makes it you know feel new again and even playing on on the original game boy display filter everything still looks so much cleaner and nicer looking regardless even if it has that grayscale uh which is you know awesome and it does have uh color palettes as well so you can go ahead, uh, which I forgot to talk about here. So when you play a, a game uh, from a Game Boy Color, remember how some of them had like the green tint on it and stuff. So that's also available. So you can change the display, not only just the display mode, but also the color palettes of the game. So you can make it really look like the original Game Boy had that green tint when you were playing Tetris back in the day and stuff like I was, which is really good. So you have a lot of different options there to mess with, uh, which I really like. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else to be said about it. And you could put games to sleep. I did forget about that. So if you have a game in and you want to just put the game to sleep, you just touch this for, like, you just go like that, and it puts it to sleep. Obviously, there's no game here. Let me just show you real quick. If I had, um, you know, the, the, the pinball Pokemon pinball game in here, and I just put it to, and I had, you know, this playing, and I opened up the cartridge, and it was playing in the background, and let's say that I wanted to, you know, I got to the screen and I didn't want to play anymore. I can just press this real quick. It says it's going to sleep. 
And now I can go ahead and it leaves it to sleep. I think it says it, it does get longer battery life, of course, if you put it to sleep, but it won't last you like, you know, weeks on end just because it's asleep. It's still obviously on holding power. It will just last you longer than the six to 10 hours of battery life that you get. But if you're in a pinch and you don't want to do a save state for whatever reason, and you know, you're going to come back to it in an hour and you don't want to do a save state for no reason, you could do this, put it to sleep and then just press the power button again. It says wake and it wakes up and it will be exactly where you left the game off before. Uh, that you can continue playing right away. So I think that's also a really cool feature in case you know you're going to come back to it in like an hour and you don't want to waste your time putting, you know, doing a save state because you know you're going to come back to it. Uh, that's really cool as well. So I think this device is really awesome. I almost, there was a bunch of times where I almost got a new Game Boy device that was like, you know, all the ones that they sell with better screens and stuff on the Game Boy Advance. But I was always like, eh, I want the original stuff. Like I bought the Game Boy Advance because I wanted to feel nostalgic and stuff. So I never did. And I left it as is. And I'm glad I held off and got this because now I kind of have that for all my Game Boy, Game Boy Color games and Game Boy Advance and Game Gear and all the rest of them coming out next year. Where if I don't want to play on the original hardware and I want to just play on, the, on, but I still want to feel like I'm playing on original hardware like I am on here because of the way that this is designed. I'm going to have the best display possible, uh, which is great. And the save states, which are going to be fantastic. And I still feel like I'm playing a Game Boy and I can still bring my cartridges and have the nostalgic feel, which I think is really cool. So guys, if you guys are looking for something like this, I, I definitely, obviously it is expensive, but I, I do think if this is something you want, there's no better display out there to be able to play your Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games on here. It's really, really good. Especially Game Boy Color and Game Boy and, and the original Game Boy, because obviously it takes up the full screen uh, on here because it's the exact same aspect ratio, which is awesome. So if you guys have any questions about what we talked about here today, guys, in this video, as always, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.